Hello and welcome back to Crime and Justice. Today we're looking back at the case of Elijah Vu, the three-year-old who went missing in February, the 20th of February 2024, from Two Rivers, Wisconsin. His mother is um, in, in jail, held on a $15,000 bond, and her partner, Jesse Vang, is also held in jail, and I think it's a $20,000 bond. So they're not getting out, and so they shouldn't, because these two know where Elijah Vu is. Elijah Vu was last with Jesse Vang. And we're going to look at that today. Right, so. Let's just see what we got. Elijah Vu vanished from his mother's boyfriend's home in Two Rivers on Tuesday the 20th of February. 2024. He had been sent 150 miles away from home for disciplinary reasons, with details now showing that the little boy was subjected to lengthy timeouts and threats of cold showers if he misbehaved. Now, I have covered all that, and so if you're not up on this case, if you don't know about this case, Elijah Vu, Please go to the playlist that will be added to this video. Click on the playlist that will come up at the top of the page about now. And it will tell you all the details. It will show you the documents, some of the documents we've got, some of the court appearances we've got, everything. Right. Both... Elijah, Elijah's mother, Katrina Barra, 31, and her boyfriend, Jesse Vang, 39, have been charged with chronic child neglect. As of Tuesday, 19th of March, the search is still underway, underway for the little boy, and the FBI has offered $15,000 reward for information. Here's the timeline. 12th of February. Katrina Barra leaves Elijah with Jesse Vang in Two Rivers, arrived a two and a half hour drive from her home in Wisconsin, Dallas, which I also cover in my Lives of Elijah Vu. So please go over and cl click on the links. Elijah is allegedly subjected to discipline tactics by Mr. Vang, including standing timeouts teaching him to pray and threats of cold water he, if, if, he, if he misbehaves. He's three years old. He is three years old. A photo, 14th of February. A photo is taken in the early hours showing Elijah on a bed, wearing a blindfold and with bruising on his face. What the hell? February the 15th, another photo shows Elijah standing in a corner wearing just a diaper. It appears to be full and his hands are in a prime position. <sighs> Sorry. Manitowoc District Attorney on the 16th of February. Manitowoc District Attorney alleges Elijah is left alone for around an hour in Manitowoc City while Miss, Miss Barra and Mr Vang are elsewhere. He's a three-year-old and he's been left alone. Okay. Late in February, Mr. Van tells Mrs. Ball via text message that he will teach Elijah not just to fear him, but to respect him too. 20th of February, this is the day it all starts. Mr. Van gets up to give Elijah breakfast, cereal without milk. Well, he didn't just get up to give Elijah his breakfast. He got up to help his son 
who I believe is autistic, get on the school bus. And then he came back and gave Elijah cereal without milk. Elijah, 23 8 a.m., Elijah is told to stand at the foot of Mr. Fang's bed and pray while a man takes a nap. Wow. So hard work, isn't it? So tiring. This was the last known sighting of Elijah, according to Mr. Vang's police testimony. Right, and then we got 20 February 10th, 59 a.m. So 89, 90. Nearly three, yeah, three hours later, they get a phone call. Two Rivers Police Department gets a phone call from Mr. Vang reporting Elijah missing. Hmm. Police issue an appeal for help in finding Elijah while an Amber Alert also goes out to the local community. Elijah is described as around three foot tall with brown eyes and hair. He's wearing grey sweatpants, a dark coloured long sleeve shirt and a red and green dinosaur slip on shoes. He may have been carrying a red and white plaid blanket. Right. Oh, I'd have to question that because when you, when you hear about what this little boy went through in that short time he was at that guy's house, I don't think he was even in clothing. I think he just had an overfull, overfull nappy on, diaper. That's what I think he had on. I don't think he had clothes. I think he just had an overfilled diaper. Twenty of February, 5pm, locals are asked to search out buildings, vehicles and any other areas where Elijah may have become trapped or hidden. While police utilise drones and search dogs as part of the efforts, Jesse Bank is arrested on suspicion of child neglect that evening. Twenty of February, Katrina Barra is arrested on suspicion. Suspicion of being party to a crime, child neglect. Hmm, that soon changes. Search efforts on the 23rd, search efforts continue across two rivers and Elijah's own town of Wisconsin Downs. Miss Bauer and Mr. Vang appear in court. I've got them, I've got that, I'm wrong my other lives. Two Rivers Police Department confirmed they are searching a landfill site as part of the investigation. Ms. Barra and Mr. Bang appear in court again, with the remote fact receiving two additional charges of, of obstruction. The details of Mr. Bang's tactics emerge in court documents. 27th of February, a week after Elijah's disappearance, police say they are still hopeful of bringing him home safely. Now, this is a three-year-old, right, who I believe was not wearing any clothes but a diaper. I don't think he was wearing any of those clothes, right? I don't think. But even so, if he was, he's a three-year-old in February. It's not hot weather. It's freezing weather. He's not going to get very far, right? So you, we're all thinking, oh, he's going to be found. If he's wounded out of that flat, he's going to be found. Miss Barra, on the 29th of February, Miss Barra asks for her bond to be changed so she can get out of jail. Police say they've searched storm water drives as part of a continual effort to find Elijah, while volunteers and Ian, Ron Dula, have started searching the town, which sits between two rivers and Wisconsin Downs. March the 4th. Search enter third week, Two Rivers Police Department released photos of a beige 1997 Nissan Ultima asking for help in tracking its movement on the 19th of February, the day before Elijah reported missing. Law enforcement has possession of the vehicle. Now, the reason I was asking for this is because on the 19th of February, on the on the 19th of February, the day before he went missing, he was reported missing. They borrowed a car from a so-called friend. 
Yeah, this car was. So they can, they've got a, they can have a basic range of how far that car had drove in those few hours that they had it. But they don't know where it went. And that's why I was asking for anyone with any ha uh, home security footage, still ring doorbell footage, or anyone seeing the car in any area around there. 7th of March, two suspects appear in court. We've updated charges announced for Mrs. Ms. Barrett. A statement from her mother is read out, asking for the judge not to let her daughter out of jail. That is heartbreaking. For a mother to do that, it's heartbreaking. So please, that, I have got that. Go and watch it. A judge rules that Miss Bow will go to trial. Mr. Vang has requested a speedy trial and an attorney. Miss Bow's arraignment is scheduled for 22nd March. <laughs> 18th March. Police reveal they have positively identified a blanket found around 3.7 miles away from Elijah, from where Elijah was put missing as belonging to the little boy. The lit they actually found it about three days after he went missing, but they didn't announce it because they had to do all the forensic checks on it, the DNA, and they had to wait for all that to come back. Jesse Vang, 21st March, Jesse Vang appears in court briefly via video link, along with two new attorneys, this preliminary, preliminary hearing is adjourned until the 4th of March. Right. And that's so far. But here, let's listen to what they say here. We plead with you to please come forward. Your courage, your compassion, your willingness to speak up may hold the key to Elijah's safe return. Every piece of information will, bring, will help bring us one step closer to bring Elijah back, back to our family where he belongs. To those who may have information your assistant is just not a contribution, but a lifeline of hope. I want everybody to uh, continue to help us to look for my grandson. I want my grandson to be home with my family. So I want everybody to continue. Don't stop. Just searching for my baby Elisha. We want him to be safe and with my family and we love my grandson. Now that is so sad. Right? So anyway, so now big search went on. They've been to court, they've had different little try little court sessions, which wasn't a lot of the time it wasn't worth uh going live on because it was literally three to five minutes long. Right. But I will be reporting on if it goes to trial. Now the mother has asked not for her daughter not to be released because she believes her daughter holds the key or holds the information to where little Elijah Vu. Her, her son, her grandson, Miss Barra's son, and the grandmother's grandson is. Now, they have done searches all, all over the place, and I mean everywhere, right? And this little boy is still not... They've even had... Oh, God, I'll find it in a minute. Right? They've even had... Grand searching, what was it called? 
uh, software technology to the software designed to detect anomalies in the earth. Right? Well, we've now hit six months. On the 20th of August, it was six months. I think on the 21st, it was his birthday. So we would have been four. Well, here we have Two Rivers Police Department, what they put out on August the 20th. Release date, August the 20th, 2024, 10.45am. Two Rivers Police. Elijah Vu has not been found. Today marks six months since Elijah Vu was reported missing. Elijah is always on our minds with our agency and we continue to be more hopeful that we will locate him. We are confident that our investigation will ultimately reveal the truth of Elijah's disappearance. We continue to follow up on tips and leads with the help of our local state and federal law enforcement partners. In the last several months, we have conducted further searches utilising private search and rescue groups on land, water and in the air. We continue to analyse extensive amounts of data from these searches, using specialised equipment and technologies such as software to de pardon me, software designed to detect anomalies in the earth. In the coming weeks, we plan to continue our search efforts using additional aerial searches with this technology. Right. Recently, rumours surfaced online and on social media platforms stating Elijah had been found. This is not true. The spreading of false and misleading information is disrespectful to the family of Elijah and detracts from our efforts in locating him. We've also been made aware of fake GoFundMe or similar pages. Ooh. Hold on. I swear to God, this laptop that have been set up and we advise the public to be to be aware and report these scams. We are also aware of some individuals who appear close to the case and are proving ulterior motives by spreading false information. We would like to remind everyone that we remain the sole source Oh, sorry about this. Come on. No, no. Go back up. No. We would like to remind everyone that we remain the sole source of factual information on this investigation. I can't get my words out today. And we'll really read it. Ugh. Release more information and updates when they are available to share. We feel it's important for the public to know that while they might have been seeing us in the last several months resuming standard operations within our community, such as calls for service, community events and the like, the search for Elijah and the investigation still continues and remains our priority. Our investigative team, including members of our agency, led by the Wisconsin Department of Justice Division of Criminal Investigation, DCI, is actively working on this investigation as other entries outside our department. This is still mm, this is still an active investigation and we're working hard to find answers. We will continue to share any information as we can. Thank you for your continued support. Captain Andrew Ratz to Rivers Police Department. That was released by them. Right. No one has been charged yet in the in Elijah's disappearance, no one. But we know, we've got a good idea. 
right? We've got a fairly good idea, right? Eliza was at Jesse Banks from the 12th up to the 20th. On the 19th, they borrow a friend's car, which had no GPR, GPS on it, for a few hours, come back. Then on the 20th, they report Elijah Vu missing. Something not quite right there, I don't think. I think something happened on the 19th, 18th, 19th. Well, even earlier, maybe. And on the 19th, when the borrowed that car, that is when, this is just my opinion, that is when they removed the body from his home, from that home, and took it somewhere. The blanket was found three and a half miles away from where he was reported missing from. So that could have been thrown out of a car window. Right? Or they could have got, stopped the car and just gone and placed it somewhere just to throw us off the trail. Uh, so I believe, depending on the distance the car travelled, it's got to be in that area. So using that uh, software where they can fly over areas and pick out any, what was it the word they used? Uh, where they can design to detect an an anomaly. I, I can't say that word. Anomalies, 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 anomalies in the earth. That mean they're looking for. They're not looking for a little boy now. They're looking for a body. This is not a search to find a little boy. This is a search and rescue. This is a criminal investigation because two people are in prison, well, jail, right now. And I think they just need that bit of evidence to charge them with the murder. They need some... That, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. Because to me, when you work and look at a case of a missing child, it's always that one piece of information that's missing. So it's like a jigsaw puzzle. You start from the beginning and you've got to put all these pieces together. But there's that one piece. That one piece. Little piece that always goes missing in a jigsaw puzzle. And that's what we're missing here. We're missing that one piece of information for this case, in this case, to find Elijah. Right. Now, they did have a birthday party for him, I believe. Um, look at me. Yellow, oh, yeah, yellow and blue balloons. A birthday party for Elijah Vu brought the community out to Kiwangis Park in Appleton on Sunday afternoon. August the 20th marked Elijah's, Elijah's fourth birthday and it also marked the six-month anniversary of his death, of his disappearance. What a shame. Friends, family and members of the searchers were all in attendance. It was a dinosaur themed birthday, face painting and blue animals for the kids. Some people in attendance came from Facebook groups, meeting each other in person for the first time and looking to make some light on out of a difficult situation and inspire hope. We are still holding on to hope one way or another. We're holding on to hope that we'll find him, said Michelle Ramsden, the event organisers. People don't know each other. They don't know Elijah. Many of us have never met him, but we're here for him. All right, let's just skip this and let's see what they say. Oh, God. Oh, no. Let's get this back to the beginning. Huh? Oh. Let's get this back. My laptop is playing up today. It keeps jumping up and down. 
birthday party for Elijah Vu brought the community out to Kiwanis Park in Appleton this afternoon, August 20th. Marked Elijah's fourth birthday, and it also was the six-month anniversary of his disappearance from an apartment in Two Rivers. Attendees were made up of friends, family, and members of the searches. It was a dinosaur-themed party with face painting and balloon animals for the kids. Some people in attendance came from Facebook groups, meeting each other in person for the first time, looking to make some light out of a difficult situation and inspire hope. We are still holding on to hope, one way or another. Um, we are still holding on to, to hope that we will find him. People that don't know each other, that don't know Elijah, many of us have never met him. We're here for him. Organizers say they will continue to put events together in the upcoming weeks, bringing awareness to finding Elijah as that search continues. Case. All right. So. This is such a shame. He's, he was three years old when he was, well, three and a half when he went missing. And on his six months, six months after he went missing is his fourth birthday. Right, now I've got some more. This really annoyed me. Right, I'm going to have to try and find it. Right? A Wisconsin judge denied a request from the mother of missing three-year-old Elijah Vu, who has been the subject of an active Amber Alert since his disappearance in February, to reduce her bond. No, it shouldn't be reduced. I totally agree. It shouldn't be. She knows where her son is. Katrina Barra, 31, faces child neglect charges for the dispute. Plus, if they did release her, she's got connect connections with Jesse Vang, family and friends who could get her out, get her away from there, totally. And argue that she could not afford the current 15,000 cash bond. Well, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. She asked for it to be reduced to 5,000, but the judge denied the request, citing the severity of the case and concerns about Barra's past behaviour and lack of a stable address. I don't think 5,000 is a sufficient amount, given the nature of what's being alleged here and what the court knows from the complaint, to keep someone appearing from a, uh, for court when they're supposed to. She needs to be where I need to be sure she's able to be at court, which is in prison, jail. Right, but that isn't what I wanted to talk to you about. No. Well, I can't find it, but what a judge has agreed to is that she can get to see her other child, her daughter, who she left in a car outside Jesse Vang's apartment in the freezing weather with no heating in the car, right, nothing. She left this child in that car for several hours while she was in Jesse Vang's apartment. That's why the charges were up to chronic neglect because of that child. However, the judge has agreed that she can see her daughter on with supervised visits. How? No. No. How can I go to that one? She knows where that little boy is. If she doesn't know, she knows some information about it. Right? But she knows something. And she's not talking. I'd be saying, okay, you can have supervised visits with your daughter if you tell us what you know about your son's disappearance. If you don't tell us, you don't get to see your daughter. Because you are actually being charged with 
neglect of her. You know what I mean? So that would be a stipulation. That was a... That was a... Something they had to get her to talk. What did I do? No stipulations on you. Yes, you can see your daughter. The only stipulation is like supervised visits. So it's going to be in the jail or in the prison, whatever you call it, jail. Right? It's going to be in there. But I would just put, st- put this like that on you. I just said, yes, okay. Once you tell us where, you know, your son is, then you can see your, your daughter. But they haven't. And I think they've slipped up there. They could have used that as leverage to get her to talk about where Elijah is. But they haven't. So... That's it so far. So we recap, recap. The 20th of February, Elijah Vu was reported missing at L- 89, 19, 10, 10. Uh, about three hours later, 11 a.m. in the morning. Land, Amber Alert went out, uh, searches were formed, land, air, water, everything was done. They're still looking. Searches are still going on. But nothing. The mother, Miss Barra, is in prison. Jail. Should I say jail or prison? I don't know which. Jail. I'm not sure. Is it prison they go to first and then jail? Or is it jail they go to first and then prison? I think it's jail. She's in jail. On a $15,000 bond. Uh, her partner, Jesse Vang, is in jail, but he's opted for a speedy tr- um, trial, where she's opted out, I believe. The search still continues. It's six months gone now on the 20th of February. It was his birthday on the 20th of August. The search still goes on. It was his fourth birthday as well. Yeah, they had that little party for him, which I thought is so sweet. So sweet that they had that little party for him. And that's it, really. And the fact that she now gets to see her daughter with supervised visits. How no? That should never have happened. Not without some sort of stipulation. Apart, the only stipulation I know is it's supervised, which obviously it has to be, right? But they could, that was leverage they had to get her to talk. And they've just literally thrown that out the window. Tell us where Elijah is and you'll get to see your, your daughter. Don't tell us, you don't get to see your daughter. And the only once you tell us where he is and once we find him, Will you get to see your daughter? If you tell us where he is and we go there and he's not there, then you get it don't apply. You don't get to see your daughter. Put it that way. So, as I said, anyway, so keep your thoughts on Elijah. He's still out there somewhere. He needs to be brought home. He needs to be brought home. One way or the other. We've got to stay hopeful. We've got him. They may have sold him to someone. He may not be in the USA. He may be across the border. They may have sold him. Because that seems the sort of thing they would do. Right? Anyway, so I'm going to leave it out there. Let me know your thoughts on this case. How you feel about it? How you feel about her seeing her daughter? Okay, she supervised physics, but how do you feel about her seeing her daughter? Even though, A, she's not said anything about Elijah Vu, and B, the charges were upped to chronic neglect because she neglected her daughter, yet they're letting her see her daughter. 
Let me know what you feel. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you all very soon. Like this video. Please share this video. And like I said, please leave a comment. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching my videos. Love you all.